As America remembered 9-11 on Sunday, uh, Erica, you were down there at Ground Zero mm -hmm. watching uh, the family members see the memorial for the first time. Yeah, where, where the press was at Ground Zero, we were, you know, sort of held back, understandably, from the families to give them their space. A number of them were great, though, and, and did speak with us. And so I'm going to show you some pictures that I took uh, on my phone, actually, of what we saw. This is what you saw a lot of. You saw families holding up photos of their loved ones, mementos, a number of T-shirts with pictures. That, of course, is a picture of the flag at the very beginning of the ceremony. This is from the Firefighters Monument. Uh, it's a, up on Riverside Drive on the Upper West Side. Yeah. This gets a lot less attention on 9-11, but it is an incredibly moving place to be. There were 343 flags flanking that monument this year, uh, and bikers from pretty much all over the country, hundreds and hundreds of motorcycles there. Um, 343, was, which is how many New York City firefighters died lost on 9-11. And then I want to share with you this picture, too. I met a woman named uh, Christina Bach. She lost her brother, Gary, her Irish twin. He was brought home on her first mm -hmm. birthday from the hospital. This is a picture of Gary. He had jumped off of his fire truck, and he was running through the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Now, her family was told this is what Gary did on 9-11, but they really weren't sure. And she said, you know, at one point I thought, maybe the commissioner told me that just to make us feel better. Well, two years ago, this picture was found on a website. A European uh, businessman was here, took it as he was trying to go the other way. So Incredible. they finally had proof that Gary had done that. And it was, he kept saying to them, well, it's just a picture. And she said, you don't understand, this is everything. Her dad has never been able to bring himself to go to Ground Zero. This year, he's going to do the Tunnel to Towers run, which is a really important uh, fundraiser and, and run that's done every year here in commemoration on 9-11 because his, he said he wants to walk his son's final steps. Amazing. Amazing great, son. great families. It is. Uh, we do want to take one last look back at Sunday's 10th anniversary events. Uh, here you go. In all the years that Americans have looked to these ceremonies, we have shared both words and silences. The words of writers and poets have helped express what is in our hearts. The silences have given us a chance to reflect and remember. Said the words of the prophets are written on the subway wall. Joseph, Michael, Giacconi, we love you and miss you. It's 10 years, but it's still not easy. God bless every soul that we lost. God bless the family members who have to endure that loss. And I still love you. And my uncle, firefighter Gerald Thomas Abbott. We miss you more than words could ever describe. You can close your eyes, it's all right. Sebastian Gorky, who I never met because I was in my mom's belly. I love you, Father. I love you for loving the idea of having me. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Thank you for your courage, Todd M. Beamer. Let's roll. Why and for what purpose was this battle forced upon the 40 passengers and crew of Flight 93? No memorial, no ceremony, no words will ever fill the void left in your heart. Decades from now, Americans will visit the memorials to those who were lost on 9-11. They'll run their fingers over the places where the names of those we loved are carved into marble and stone. And they will know that nothing can break the will of a truly united States of America.